Rebecca, and it's good to be back to talk to you more about Pacific Northwest salmon. Do you know why we chose to teach you about salmon in this video series? Salmon are incredibly important in the Pacific Northwest. In fact, they're something called a keystone species. A keystone species is like the last block in a Jenga tower. Everything seems stable until that last block is removed and then it all collapses because everything else was depending on that one block. Salmon in the Pacific Northwest help hold up their ecosystems. More than 137 different kinds of wildlife depend on salmon. Can you think of some species that might depend on salmon? Salmon are an important food source for many kinds of organisms. Large macroinvertebrates can eat the salmon eggs or alvin, and so can fish, birds, frogs, and almost anyone who lives in or near the stream. As salmon get larger and start hunting in their fry life stage, they eat the macroinvertebrates, the stream bugs. This helps keep the macroinvertebrate populations down so that they don't eat all of the plants, wood, and other decomposing materials in the stream. So even plants and algae depend on the salmon to help protect them from predators in the stream. Fry and smolt are important food sources for some of the larger predators in the stream. Animals like otter and minks and weasels hunt these little fish for themselves and for their babies. Wading birds like great blue herons and diving birds like cormorants also hunt for the salmon. They use their long sharp beaks to catch them. Do you remember one of the animals that eat salmon when they're adults in the ocean? Orca whales! Adult salmon play an important role in the complex ocean food web. They help keep the populations of their many prey, including plankton and other fish, in check. And they help sustain the populations of many of their predators. Orcas, seals, sea lions, eagles, sharks, other big fish, these all rely on salmon for their food source. And so do humans. All right, let's talk about the last stage in the salmon life cycle, the spawner. Some of the most dramatic interactions happen in this life stage. By spawning time, salmon can be three to five feet long, and some of the largest Chinook salmon easily top 100 pounds. Spawners are what we all probably imagine when we think about salmon. They change from their silver coloration as adults to something way more vibrant with reds and greens. And the male pink salmon even develop a hump on their back. In all species, the male salmon also develop something called a kipe, or a hooked jaw that they use to fight each other over females and nesting grounds. These fish, both male and female, travel up to hundreds of miles from the ocean back upstream to almost exactly the same spot where they were born. And they do this using primarily their sense of smell. Can you imagine trying to find your way home from school using only your sense of smell? A salmon's sense of smell is a thousand times stronger than a dog's sense of smell, and it's a million times stronger than our sense of smell. So they're able to pick up on tiny signals, chemical signals in the water and figure out where to go. Now something interesting happens when these salmon travel back to their birth streams to spawn. Salmon have something called a semalparous reproductive system. Talk about big words, right? What this means is instead of reproducing several times throughout their life, like how a cat might have several litters of kittens, salmon reproduce only once. And since they only have one shot at reproducing, they put every ounce of energy they have into getting back to their birth stream to produce and fertilize eggs. They don't eat much on their trip home and they even break down their own tissues for energy and to rebuild them into eggs and milt. So as a result, the salmon die after they spawn. But even in dying, these salmon are providing for the younger salmon. Their bodies are eaten and broken down by macroinvertebrates in the stream, which will later be eaten by the new young salmon fry and smolt. So even salmon depend on salmon. But not all of the dead salmon are eaten by macroinvertebrates. During the spawning season, many predators flock to the stream to take advantage of this bounty of energy. Bears, coyotes, wolves, eagles, ravens, crows, and even small songbirds come to take advantage of this. 
To avoid competitors, large animals like bears and wolves grab some salmon and pull them off into the forest so they can eat away from potential thieves. And because the salmon are so abundant, they might only eat the best parts, the brains and the eyes, and leave the rest of the body behind. So what happens to the rest of that salmon? Well, it decomposes. Over time, fungi, bacteria, and invertebrates break down or decompose the salmon bodies, even more species that depend on salmon. And so the energy from the salmon's body become part of the soil. And believe it or not, someone else is still next in line for food from the salmon, the plants. Researchers have found that plants growing near the stream get 25 to 70 percent of their nutrients from salmon. In one study, scientists found that Sitka spruce trees growing near a salmon stream take only 86 years to grow to be 20 inches thick, while Sitka spruce trees growing not near a salmon stream take 300 years to grow to be that same size. Salmon are connected to many types of, of animals and plants because they're a keystone species. But millions of other connections exist in these ecosystems. Animals eat each other, trees provide shelter, decomposers break down dead animals and plants and make new soil. This week, we're going to draw an ecosystem web that shows many different connections in a healthy Pacific Northwest forest. Here's one that I drew. For each connection, draw a line between the two organisms and label it with a description of the connection. And as always, if you'd like, we'd love to see what you create. So you can email a photo of your ecosystem web to education at mtsgreenway.org and we might share it on our social media. Be well, keep making observations, and check back soon for the last video in this Forests and Fins video series to see what's next. Have fun, bye. Thank you.